We lift your name. 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 Hallelujah. 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 In the Montaro. Kamar Haka Sai Mugai Da Juna E Mona Morna Tangaski An Mo Tata Bata Don Moya Yang Allah Kua Da Kua Dan Montaro, e Kamar Akam, Sai Mugai Na Juna, e Mona Mona, Bangaski Armo, Tata Bata. glad in it. This is the gathering of the champions because I believe strongly that Kaduna State DCC is the heart of Equa. That whatever happens in Kaduna State DCC will affect Equa positively. And by the special grace of God we are here for a retreat. Forget about home. Calm down. Alright? Everybody is important in this gathering. And I pray that the Lord will see us through in Jesus' name. You may please have your seat. Thank you, the fellowship secretary. Good morning in the evening. You're all welcome in Jesus' name. That's what uh, one of my teachers, Dr. Anyway Gambo, he's always said, good morning in the evening. So I'm not wrong. You're all welcome. Uh, all serving chairmen and secretaries, this is your seat behind our leaders. Please, if you are serving secretary and chairman, please come up. Former DE, this is your seat. Please, with due respect, can you come up? Well, you are doing that. I will ask uh, the vice chairman of the fellowship for opening prayer, Reverend Dauda Haruna, before we go into Equa Anthem.
We're glad to formally welcome each and every one of us. The fellowship chairman will formally welcome us in his welcome address. Let's do that quietly, please. Let's do that quietly. Uh, just find a seat. We'll have time to exchange pleasantries later. Please, let's move to our seats quietly. I beg you. Like I was saying, uh, the fellowship secretary will formally welcome us in his welcome address. But before he does that, since this is the very first session, Are you done? Can we continue? All right. Let's take our Bibles in our hands and turn to Psalms 133. We'll read this scripture in a standing position if I have your permission. Zabura Tedari the Talatin the Uku Zamwe Karatung Wana Nasi at A Semi Adwa Zanya Karatu the Turenchi. I'm reading from the New King James Psalms. 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hammon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Amen. Mahali chumu baban sarki mama laki. Muna atsehe agabanka alama cheta bangir makuma da nuna godia. Muna godia doming tauring madawa miyar kaunar ka mun samu kasancewa a cikin wannan taro idan akwai yan uwa da har yanzu suna bisa hanya cikin rahamar ka cikin alherin ka muna roko ka iso da sunan wurin cikin koshin lafiya amma mu da muke cikin wannan masujada godiya muke muna rokon albarku daga gare ka cikin wannan taro muna rokon kariya daga gare ka cikin wannan taro muna adua domin bayin ka wadanda za su kosar da mu cikin maganar ka su kuma ba uh, ba da koyaswa da kasidu a wannan taron ubangiji kai musu jagora kai musu jagora mu kuma muna roƙon ubangiji ka ba mu zuciya ta koyo domin a koyar da mu mu kara kaifi cikin aikin da muke yi mu kara kwazo da himma cikin bautar ka mun gode mun yi wannan roko da tabbacin zaka ji kai fiye da abin da muka roka albarkacin sunan Isa almasihu mai ceton mu amen you are welcome i want to plead at the beginning of this conference to please give as much of our attention that is required. If we continue to converse and to chat among ourselves, it will distract the people around us 
And that will not be healthy for this meeting. We are pastors, we are leaders. The Lord will help us to do what is right. I didn't, I didn't hear you say amen. Thank you and you're welcome. Thank you. Equa TV will lead to us. Although we still have the Equa anthem here. So we can be on our feet. Umiki say, Domin Mui Equa anthem. Yena Nang Atkin program. Equa TV, are you set? One, two, go. Dying our hands, loving and doing 
Thank you. Bang. Please still come out. We are going to number C, congregational hymn. We are going to do it in standing position. If you don't mind, please be on your feet. M pitch. Page seven. Page seven. Yes. Number thirty-eight. In page seven.
Hallelujah. Uh, by the special grace of God, the introduction this afternoon is going to be brief. God's willing, tomorrow we have a comprehensive introduction. Um, before the introduction, we have rest rooms, right? Ask the ushers, please, if you want to help yourself. And I beg us in the name of God, once you are there, take good care of this, the place. The committee, let's have ushers that will lead our spiritual fathers to where they will ease themselves. Okay? So permit me to introduce us DCC by DCC. We have 21 DCCs in Kaduna State and partly Nasara State. Right? Uh, we want to know if all of us are here. That's one of the major reasons for the introduction. So if I call your DCC, you may indicate by raising up your hands so that we know you are here. Right? So we are starting with Damakasua DCC. Pastors from Damakasua, wherever you are, could you please indicate? Right? So you are welcome, Damakasua. I think it will not be enough burden if we stand. Is it okay? Thank you so very much. Damakasua, could you please stand wherever you are? Thank you. Thank you so very much for coming. The Lord blessed you in Jesus' name. Uh, we have Father Nkaguma DCC. Is Father Nkaguma here? S stand on your feet. Thank you, thank you. You may have your seat. We have Gidanwaya DCC. Pastors from Gidanwaya. Hmm. If not the largest, right? Gidanwaya, you're welcome. Thank you. Pastors from Ida, DCC. Ida, DCC. Oh, Ida, thank you for coming. Do we have pastors from Kaduna Central, DCC? Thank you so very much. You may please have your seats. Pastors from Kaduna East, DCC. Kaduna East. Kaduna East, thank you for coming. You may have your seat. Pastors from Kaduna South, DCC. Kaduna South, DCC. Thank you for coming. You may have your seat. Kaswa Magani, DCC. Kaswa Magani, thank you. You may please have your seat. Kafanchan, DCC. All pastors from Kafanchan, DCC. Thank you. You may have your seat. Kagoro DCC, right? Pastors from Kagoro. Kagoro is our host. Thank you, Kagoro. You may please have your seat. Kateri DCC. All pastors from Kateri. Kateri, thank you for coming. Please have your seat. Kubacha DCC. All pastors from Kubacha, could you please stand? Oh, this is great. Thank you for coming. Please have your seat. Kurumi Musa DCC. Kurumi Musa, you are welcome. Have your seat, please. Kwasam DCC. Do we have pastors from Kwasam? Oh, that's great. Kwasam, you are welcome. Um, pastors from Kwai DCC. All pastors from Kwai DCC. Thank you so very much for coming. God bless you. Pastors from Manchok DCC. All pastors from Manchok DCC. Thank you, Manchok. Panda DCC. 
the disease that is partly in natural states. Could you please stand? Panda, thank you for coming. God bless you. Um, Saminaka disease, one of the largest diseases here. Right? Oh, Saminaka, thank you so very much. God bless you. Please have your seats. Zaria DCC. All pastors from Zaria. Zaria, thank you for coming. God bless you. Zonkua DCC. Pastors from Zonkua DCC. Zonkua, you are welcome. Have your seats. The last but not the least among the DCC is ZZ. The ZZ. The ZZ. Zone Zone DCC. <laughs> uh, they have two Z. Right? Zanzo, thank you. Thank you for coming. God bless you. And we're also privileged to have the 21 DCCs Fellowship Esco. And with us here, we have the chairman of the fellowship, Reverend Dr. Yunana Tenimu, so you're welcome. And we have the vice chairman of the fellowship, Reverend Dauda D. Haruna, so you're welcome. We have the financial secretary and the treasurer, Nehemiah Mekafa. <laughs> right? Yeah, Nehemiah Mekafa. <laughs> but you can choose to call him Nehemiah Mekai. Right? And I'm the privileged secretary, Reverend Nehemiah S. Baturi. And all chairmen and secretaries that are behind, could you please stand for recognition? Thank you so very much. When you may please have your seat. Immediately after the welcome address by the chairman, then I will introduce our father who is here before the message. Right? Thank you. Master Chairman, sir. Berkom Rezwa. Ya Hanya. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad. In it. Hallelujah. This is the day. I will be talking to us tomorrow, so I'm not going to take a lot of time today other than to say our guest preacher, you are highly welcome to this historic convention of our 2022. Our chairman and secretaries, DCC executive members, pastors of our churches, I welcome you to this wonderful time of reunion in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You will agree with me that there are some people that you missed for a long time. From today, you will have a fresh reunion with them. So please feel free to interact and uh, make new friends during this conference. We made the program in such a way that you will not be so tired. 
And that is why each day we have only two sessions. So that you have enough time to rest and to reunite with your friends. Uh, let me say this. If you are a one-time either 12 diseases or 18 diseases or 19 diseases or 21 diseases fellowship leader, a one-time expo leader, please, we invite you to join us here. If you are a one-time executive member of this fellowship in the past, it doesn't matter when, please uh, feel free to come and join us here. In addition to that, all chairmen, I mean secretaries or DCC executive members, this section and this section and this front seat here are meant for us to be close by. So if you are an, a DCC executive member, either past or present leader, please find your seat somewhere here or somewhere here or at the frontage here. And the rest of us, uh, maybe tomorrow, there are so many seats on top and behind and so on and so forth. Please, let's take our proper seats. You're welcome. I think we'll have to take offering before we introduce the speaker, according to the program, right? Yeah, okay, so we'll leave that for now. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. What in the Suna Chojin and Yomera Tasa Tasa Bans Zuku Kaumana Waka Sana. I don't know Zah Bini Kuza Zogabani. A beaver? Okay. So Eddie, all ADS. all ADS, please, all ADS from our various DCC, please be on your feet and come forward. What? What is that being for? What is that education? All ADS from our various DCC, please come forward. All ADS, 21 ADS, please come and take your cup. Say a bit, ban. A house summer. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I won't see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up. And I won't turn back because I won't see my Jesus someday. Everybody say, I've got my mind made up. And I won't, and I won't turn back because I won't see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind, I've got my mind made up. And I won't. I want to see my Jesus. Come on. I've got my mind. I've got my mind. And I want and I want Because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind. And I want Because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up that I weren't turn back because I weren't to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I weren't turn back because I weren't to see my Jesus someday. Oh, goodbye world, goodbye world. With you, a good 
find pleasure I stay no longer with you I've made up my mind To go that way for the rest of my life Everybody sing I made up my mind To go that way for the rest of my life Oh, goodbye world Goodbye world I stay no longer Made up my mind to go that way for the rest of my life. I made up my mind. I made up my mind to go that way for the rest of my life. One more time. Goodbye world. Goodbye world. I stay no longer. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasure. Let's see. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind. When they got feet of counseling, soon and so. When they got feet of counseling, soon and so. When they got feet of counseling, soon and so. When they got feet of counseling, soon and so. When they got feet of counseling, soon and so. Hosanna, Hosanna, 
Let's pray. Our Father and our God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for the opportunity to converge to this place. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful time we had worshiping you and also dipping our hands into our pocket to give for the work of the ministry. We ask that, Lord, you bless and bless your people. Thank you, Father, because we know that you will do it. In Jesus' name we pray. It is a privilege for me to be here to introduce my lecturer, my professor. I'm not worthy to do that, but because of leadership, I have to do it. What a wonderful privilege. Uh, our guest speaker is good to know him. And I'm afraid. In the church I'm pastoring, I said you have to be a witch to be able to know a witch. <laughs> I'm afraid to let you know that we have invited a witch today. <laughs> let, even from the beginning, you will know it. This is somebody who was born two times. So if somebody is born two times, you know that he's a witch. <laughs> Biologically, our guest preacher was born on the 24th of September, 1955. And he is a son of three, I mean a son, a third son of ten children. Born to the Wajie, Ibrahim, and Lady Hannah to Queen Hiop's family. His second birth, the spiritual birth, took place in 1963. He came to know the Lord at an early age when his teacher read from John 3, 16. He was baptized in 1973 in the river Kaduna. So some of you that drink that river, you are drinking his... It was a special and memorable occasion and marked a turnaround in his life. Reverend Yakubu Boye retired, discipled him, 
and taught him the Bible, especially the book of Proverbs. He was an active particip uh, participant in Sunday school in Ekwa Kurmamashi, Kaduna, and he won many competitions in Kaduna. He was also a children's Sunday school teacher from 1972 to 1973, and a captain of the Boys Brigade of the 22nd Company at uh, Ekwa Church Kulmemashi. Our guest speaker is married to Mrs. Yelwa Tuga. He got married on the 12th of July, 1980. The Lord blessed him with Zigwai, Babangida, Kaona, and Abrak. He has gr uh, grandchildren. The names are in Baju, so they are so difficult for me to pronounce. So I will skip them. Yes, our guest preacher went to school. He went to SIM Equa Primary School, Madakia, from 1963 to 1969, where he got his school, his first school living certificate. He went to commercial school, Kaduna, in 1971 to 73, where he got certificate in proficiency. He went to Kagoro Bible College, 1975 to 1979 where he got his certificate in theology. He went to Joss Equa Theological Seminary, 1980 to 84, where he got his BA in theology. He went to West, Western Seminary, Portland in USA, from 1986 to 88, where he got his Masters of Earth in Exegetical Studies with high honors. He also went to Trinity International University in the U.S. That is um, where he got his Ph.D. in systematic theology. He went for postdoctoral studies, where he did global research. I mean, in Global Research Institute, Pasadena, California. He is a man who has served Lord, the Lord. So work experience, he has occupied several positions such as a pastor, so he has been in the church. He will be talking from experience. He was a pastor, he became a principal, a local overseer, not a local offender. He rose to the rank of academic dean, dean of student affairs, provost, head of the postgraduate studies, and as we know, the EQUA General Secretary, a one-time EQUA General Secretary. Our guest speaker for today went through some major conferences. There are so many of them, but a few are mentioned here. He has attended many national and international conferences and presented so many papers, some of which include, one, the Church and Human Rights, which was sponsored by Civil Liberties Organization. He assisted in editing the manual on the Church and Human Rights, Lagos, Nigeria, 1995. Another conference that he attended, Albinism, Witchcraft, and human rights. You are beginning to see why I said what I said. <laughs> and that was in the United Nations, Geneva, Switzerland, in, on the 21st to 23rd and 28th uh, of September that he had that conference. Another one is uh, challenges of the church in Africa and dealing with Islam. Symposium organized by the South African Theological Seminary in October 2021. Again, he had another paper on African spirituality, a paper he presented at the Reformer Lagos, Nigeria in September 13 and 16, 2022. That is this year. He has so many publications. 
He has published many books, articles, both nationally and internationally. In fact, as I came this evening, we are seated together, and he said he is pregnant with six books. So I've decided to keep quiet because I'm pregnant with only three. There are three books that I'm working on, hoping to publish them by next year. So when he says six, I decided to keep quiet. <laughs> One of the books that he wrote is The Practice and, the practice and Impact of Transfer in Equa. And a copy of that book is here. Those of you that, how many of you have this book? Let me see your hands up if you have it. So very few of us have it. There are a good number of copies that are here, but there will not be enough for all of us. So please, as soon as this session is over, go and grab your copy for only 500 Naira. Only how much? 500 Naira. It is too cheap. So get it. One of the books that he wrote is The Total Pastor for Total Ministry. Uh, I think that is an article... Is that an article, a book? It's an article, yeah. An article in today's challenge. Uh-huh. He wrote another section in one of the commentaries that we have, in the African Bible commentaries. He wrote something on witchcraft. See? Number two, isn't it? Top. So the African Bible commentary of 2006, there is a section that he has written in that commentary. Again, the popular book that he taught some of us, and we read that book, The African Christian Ethics. In fact, if you don't have that book, you are already cheated. Because you cannot do ethics without reading that book. I wish it were still available. Oh, they are available in Axe Bookshop. So you have not yet missed it. So please go to Ask Bookshop, you will get a copy. No matter how much it costs, you will never regret buying it. The Challenge of African Christian Morality is another article he wrote in one of the journals, Conspectus. Our speaker for today wrote another book titled African Christian Theology. Some of us have it. If you don't have it, I'm sure that book also would be in our bookshop, right? So please, some of these books are still there. So please get your own copy. Again, listen to me carefully. He wrote a book, Witchcraft, Belief and Accusations, A Christian and Biblical Perspective. And this is a copy of that book. This book costs... The cost price is about 1300 but he's releasing it for pastors of Kaduna DCCs at 1000 naira only. So there are a few copies that are around, so get your own copy so that you can go and know how to uh, fish out the witches in your church. <laughs> Our leader and mentor received a lot of awards and recognitions. He has received many academic awards and honors. A few of these include the following. President Award, Western Baptist Seminary in 1987. Another award that he got has to do with the Master of Art in theology, exegetical uh, studies that he got even to the highest honor in West uh, Seminary, Western Seminary in 1988. Another award that our leader and mentor also received is Dorothy Robertson Award in Trinity International University in the USA. At the giving of that particular award, one person made a comment that is so interesting that I would like to read for you. And the comment says, that was by Professor John Finberg. He said, whatever Sam does, 
He does with distinction. I think the club should have been more than that. Yes. We have attested to that in Equa, isn't it? We have attested to that. And I'm sure in this conference, we will also attest to it. Those of us that have not yet attested to it. The Equa executive wrote two letters of commendation, one in 2002 and one in 2005. For Equa to write a letter commending you, you must have distinguished yourself uniquely. So we are so proud, sir, to have you to be our guest speaker today in this conference. The home affairs of the South African government allowed him to live and work in South Africa. Why? For his exceptional skills in academics at the South African Theological Seminary. He was allowed to live freely and do whatever he wanted to do right there. You need to be good. Sir, we appreciate these qualities in your life. This is the man I am introducing that is going to minister to our hearts and our minds during this conference. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Very, very much. He, I didn't ask him to make that long introduction, but he's decided to do that on his own. But he's the chairman, so I, I have to accept that, and uh, that will help us. You know, the, you know um, the tendency is to hear all these things and think that, um, that I'm a great person, but I'm not. Let me qualify it. Uh, I went to primary school 1963 to 69. I was such a poor student, very, very poor student, that um, I went there to help others to, um, to become first, second, and third. <laughs> I mean, I, I went there just to help others. And I, I remember my father was so unhappy one time, and he said, Do you know what you say? He said, No, but go my shot, go my shot. You know, so the final year, um, Reverend Leah Yunana was. Um, uh, former chairman of Kaduna were together in the class. So uh, during my time, I think they still do it. We took um, exams to secondary school. I took six common uh, exams to primary school. I failed all of them, all. all. <laughs> I, I mean, so my father in 1971 was so frustrated with me, so frustrated. He sat me down around 7.30 and um, uh, I was 13 years. So he said, Sam, you are too small. Uh, to be married, you cannot go to the military. For goodness sake, what do you want to be? <laughs> you know, so I said, I, I said, I don't know. I don't know what I want to be. So all the things that I have become really is by God's grace. Kuna jigo, alherin Allah ni. Abundi yafi alherin Allah. So if people, you know, show that they are intelligent, they are wonderful, they are all these things, I look at them and say, me, I know they, they are because I know where I'm coming from and it's God's grace that has made me to be who I am. You know, some of you are looking at me, you know, you are looking very, very serious and I'm scared because, you know, uh, to come and preach to pastors, it's not an easy thing, no. You, you know, I was told of a pastor in the U.S. He was invited to preach and um, so he preached from Malachi. That pastor said, behold, I'm coming. So he read and he said, my sermon for today is behold, I'm coming. So when he said, behold, I'm coming, everybody look at him quietly, silently, focus. And then, you know, somehow nothing came out again. So he said, behold, I'm coming. Nothing came out. And then he would all his mind and boy, he said, behold, I'm coming. And then he fell over the pulpit and fell over an old lady. And he said to her, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She said, Pastor, don't warn me. Uh, please, you warned me before you came now. So, as I said, it's, it's not an easy thing to, to preach before pastors. And I said, you know, goodness, what will I say to these pastors that they have not heard? What passage will I preach that they don't know? 
So I said, Top. He asked, yeah, Holy God never will help me. Holy God never will help me. And, and I said, you know, you know, at the end of the day, God will have to speak to us because there is nothing, nothing that I can say to you to impress you. How about you are over that one? Is it exegesis? Whatever. You know everything. So I'm not here to tell you anything new. But just to share my heart. As somebody said, at our own age, we share a lot of stories. In fact, uh, one DCC invited me. In, um, I will not tell you the DCCs. But they invited me to preach. I said, I, I, don't, I don't want to preach these days. They said, hey, we know. Come and tell us stories now because we are old. Some quarter anyway, some quarter. I'm telling you, Baba, because air was back. I took a bam la barukawe. Not yet, talk. I will come. Actually, there are two things that I don't. I, you know, preaching and then uh, performing cere a wedding ceremony. Ba, as kia imbe the madole ba ko bana son daura ori. The lily, I already nangka daura ulo ba. She said, "Akwenche ba." So I, I don't really look forward to performing weddings. You know, I can go and bury somebody. If you bury somebody, he's buried ba. If you bury somebody, you bury. But my friend uh, Megadi, some of you know my friend, uh, Dr. Megadi, he performed a wedding after three months. Say, I'm going to came the certificate. Actually, he passed the guest can pass out already. Now, the certificate, Naka. So I don't really uh, listen. We'll, we'll get into it. But, but um, what language do I use? Um, you know, it's difficult. But thank God that all of us understand how to English and Hebrew and Greek. So I'm going to. You know, and I got really confused. My first language was Jew. Then we started speaking, uh, learning uh, uh, English in class two. And then when I went to uh, seminary, they added Greek and then Hebrew for my PhD. And then they added French and German. So right now I'm confused in my head. I don't know what to say. But, <laughs> but uh, we thank God that all of you can speak uh, and understand English. And finally, just to show you that all of us can understand. My, my mother died four years ago at age 90. All her children, ten of them, went to school, her grandchildren and great-grandchildren went to school. And some of you that know my house in the villages by the, by the, rail, uh, by the railway um, line. And um, so this railway uh, people, they were looking for trouble. So they came to my mother. I was in South Africa and said that my house was on, the, uh, on their property, that we have to move. If they don't move, you know, they'll come and destroy it and we'll pay. So my mother said, no, they can't build, they destroy this house. Oh. So the two railway staff said, they'll destroy it. My mother said, no. I said, yes, no, yes, no. And then finally, one of, one of the guys said, Kai, let's leave this old woman. Um, so they didn't know that she understood what they were saying. So when they said, let's leave this old woman, uh, because um, she's just too stubborn. So when they were going, I said, kuzo, kuzo, kuzo. When they came, she said, you could an old woman then. Jama attached to Renchiko Batajiba. Plural thing, the grammar thing, the Shigaba, a Masunji. I went to the Sam Kirawani, old woman, I wouldn't tell you, I like Yamana. When you see a team again. Today, I'll be looking at Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, as I said. I'm not here to impress you with really any sermon because I know that you are all there. You preach from there, maybe your sermons are there, but it's for us to um, look at God and see what he's going to tell us. Uh, many of us uh, learned um, John 3.16 even before we knew what was in. But even today, as educated as we are, when you read John 3.16, God still speaks to you, right? So... Um, so we'll look at um, Isaiah chapter 7. And I, my sermons are going to be, uh, I have three times to speak to us. By the way, we're supposed to finish at five. So if I go and they told me that it's one hour. So go, secretary. They told me one hour. One hour. One hour. So instead of um, five o'clock, it will be uh, six o'clock. And if any one of you dares to go out, you know, I will, I'm at the immediate immediate no former GS so not a sorang equal you know even though the former um, Reverend um, Danjuma Jacobi said I guess yeah former former EE so not the Bindiga Maba Sashi I 
Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. I'll read. In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, sitting on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their face, faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the door post and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. He said, Go, and tell this to the people. Be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Oh dear Heavenly Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are what we are by your grace. Can I bow my begi? I want to do near the Bible on a I just pray that Lord, these are your servants. They're here not to hear an ordinary mortal like me, but to hear me. Quite a number of us are really, really tired. And some of us might be sick. And Lord, so it, it's hard for us to listen. But Lord, as you speak, I ask that Lord, you would speak to us. Oh Lord, speak to us. Thank you for praying in Christ's name. Amen. Today, I will be speaking on the minister and his calling. The minister and his calling. And tomorrow we'll be speaking about the minister and his message. The minister and his message. And the last day we'll speak on the minister and the judgment. The minister and the judgment. I've given the outline of all my messages to the secretary. I've given all the outline of my messages. If you also like, I've given, I will give also the soft copy of all my messages to him so that whoever wants it can take it for further studies. So today is the minister and his calling. And here Isaiah is a very, very popular passage, is it not? Very, very popular passage. And so when he says in chapter 6, verse 1, it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, a very, very important phrase there is showing all that there is a context for this vision of this calling, is it not? And a context in preaching sermons is very, very important. One of my favorite mentors and writers and authors, the late John Stott, said, a meaning without a context is a pretext. Any meaning that you have that doesn't have a context is a pretext. And therefore, Isaiah, when he writes this and says, in the year that King Uzziah died, is giving us a wonderful context here that we cannot disregard. So the context there is 2 Chronicles chapter 26. Let's turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 26 very briefly so that we look at the context of Isaiah which says, in the year that King Uzziah died. In 2 Chronicles chapter 26, it says, Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, only 16 years old, and made him king in place of his father, Amaziah. He was the one who rebuilt his, uh, his accomplishments now, who rebuilt Elath and restored it to Judah after Amaziah rested with his ancestors. And then it goes, it repeats again, verse 1, it says, 
Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. Wow. 52 years he was king. His mother's name was Jecoliah. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. Good parentage, right? He sought God during the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. As long as he sought the Lord God, gave him success. As long as he sought God. This is the context, okay? As long as he sought God, God gave him success. And here are his successes. Verse 6. He went to war against the Philistines and broke down the walls of Gath, Jabna, and Ashdod. He, he then rebuilt towns near, he was a builder near Ashdod and elsewhere among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabs who live in Gerbal <coughs> and against the uh, Meonites. The uh, Ammonites uh, brought tribute to Uzziah and his fame spread as far as the border of Egypt because he had become very powerful. Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, at the valley gate, and at the angle of the wall, and he fortified them. He also built towers in the wilderness and dug many cisterns, because he had much livestock in the foothills and in the plain. He had spoken, he had people walking his fields and vineyards in the hills and in the fertile lands, for he loved the soil. He was a great farmer. 11. Uzziah had a well-trained army ready to go out by divisions according to their numbers as mustered by, the, by GL, the secretary, and Maaseah, the officer under the direction of Hananiah, one of the royal officials. The total number of family leader, uh, leaders over the fighting men was 2,600. Under their command was an army of 307,500 men trained for war. A powerful force to support the king against his enemies. Uzziah provided shields, spears, helmets, coats of armor, bows, and, and, and sling stone for the entire army. In Jerusalem, he made a device, devices invented for use on the tower, on the corner. If it is so, the soldiers could shoot arrows and roll large stones from the walls. His fame spread far and wide, for he was greatly helpful until... He became powerful. <coughs> but after Uzziah became powerful, please note it, my pastors. Became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord, his God, and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Azariah, the priest, and 80 other courageous priests of the Lord followed him in. They confronted King Uzziah and said, it is not right for you, Uzziah, to burn incense. To the Lord. That is for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, who are who have been consecrated to burn incense. Leave the sanctuary, the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful, and you will not be honored by the Lord. Uzziah, who had a censer in his hand ready to burn incense, became angry while he was while he was raging at the priests in their presence before the the, the incense uh, the incense altar in the Lord's temple. Leprosy broke out on his forehead. When Azariah, the chief priest, and all the other priests looked at him, they saw that he had leprosy in his forehead. So they hauled him out. Indeed, he was eager to live because the Lord had afflicted him. 21. King Uzziah had leprosy until the day he died. He lived in a separate house, leprous, and banned from the temple of the Lord. Jotham, his son, had charged of the palace and govern the people of the land. So back to Isaiah again, chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died. So this is the context. A very, very serious story. Before then, let me give you another story. The, I came to Bible College, as we were told, in 1975. In 1976, we had a lecturer from Dallas Theological Seminary. And when he was, um, he was uh, preaching in chapel, at one point he stopped and drank uh, from a, a cup. And I was sitting there, I was in form two, and I saw that I said, Kai, number three, Haji Daddy. When I become a big man, I would like to drink water like him. <laughs> and uh, so. <laughs> he 
you know, at that time, as a village boy, I thought that it was uh, big people in the Sunashangwazi, but I'm a guest in Mokoguro ne Abushi. So. So we have it here, in the year that King Uzziah died, this very man, that here was a king that ruled for about 55 years. He saw, he did, he experienced the good things of life as a human being and more so as a leader of the people. His accomplishments include, among others, military victories, civil engineering, political successes, popularity, and everything. All of those things he had, and he was known everywhere even by his enemies. They're very important person. And that made him proud. And that brought him down as in Proverbs 16 verse it says, pride goes before what? Before destruction. And this was true also with Satan, Lucifer. That his pride, that he's beautiful, that he's a wonderful angel, let him to fall down as an angelic being. It was so with King Herod in Acts chapter 12. We are told in verse 20 that King Herod, when he spoke with such great oratory and speech, that the people saw him and said, when they heard him, they say, the voice of a God. And because he accepted that, we are told that he was struck dead. And this was the case with King Uzziah, that his pride led him to try to do what was not his calling. He was a king and not a priest. And, be, and he felt that, look, as a king, a very powerful king, I could do whatever I want. And so even the work of a priest, of a pastor, I can do it. He became stubborn. I will not hear what the priests were telling him not to do it. You know, I think this is one common characteristic, unfortunately, of leaders, both within the church and outside. And as a former GS, I had the opportunity to meet many leaders, both in church and society. That these leaders, oftentimes they don't want to listen what ordinary people will tell them, you know, say, you know, you are a pastor and you are talking to the chairman or you are talking to the GS or the president. Who are you? Who are you to advise the chairman or the president or the GS? Who are you? Or we'll talk about the governor of the state. Who are you? And even when the governor will speak rubbish, for example, you cannot tell him that he is wrong, right? One time I had, I'll tell you a story, don't go and tell it. One time when they had a dedication of Kaduna Central, the secretariat and the president Gado and I were there and the Erufai came and he, that was the first time I met him and went to eat, you know, in the chairman's office and uh, the president, uh, general secretary was there and uh, the president introduced me as coming from uh, Southern Kaduna. So he looked at me and said, you know what, Mr. G.S., what really annoys me about Kaduna is that when you go to Kaduna, you don't see the presence of government. You just see church, church, church everywhere. Yeah, I look at him the way he sighs. You know, I said, I, <laughs> I said I shouldn't go and tell others, but because I know there are, he's supposed to, I look at his size, I look at him, I say, I say, eh, And man, I had the opportunity to relate with leaders who feel that they are so up there they don't want to listen to anybody. And Uzziah was that kind of a man. They told him, don't, don't do it all, don't do it. He said, I don't care, I'm the king. I am the number one citizen. He didn't realize that he was a mortal being. He didn't realize that, <laughs> that death was real, that sickness was real, that he was a very, very temporary person. That he was, and he will die. In fact, he died. And all of us here, in one way or the other, are, are, will be like Uzziah. And if we disobey him, regardless of our importance, and when they read our titles, you know, we feel so important. And if they dare not to call you a title, you feel offended, right? I was watching a TV program. Some, uh, somebody addressed this. It was your brother said, Tunde. He said, How about, what did I do to you? You just call me Tunde, just naked like that. No uncle, no uh, mister, no this thing. Just, just nakedly like that. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, gentlemen, titles, where do they take you? Titles, where do they take you? 
God has helped me. I've seen all kinds of titles. I've experienced all kinds of titles. Sometimes you sit down, you wonder, those titles, my wahala ni ma. Go. Wahala ni. And so this man had a national glory. He had everything. But because of his pride and arrogance, the glory of Israel died and was never the same up to date. Man lifted up on a high throne, experienced everything that a man wanted. Glory, honor, everything. And then he was hit with leprosy. The worst kind of sickness a man can ever get. And he had to be rushed out. He had to be rushed out. And he became sick, shameful, and lonely king and had to live there until he died. And it says here, the year that he died, that was the year Isaiah had the call. That is the context. And so it's back to Isaiah again. So he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted. And I term this one, transcendental purity. Transcendental just means high above. So Isaiah, in the context of this king that had been glorified, that had seen everything, had done everything, had experienced everything, was brought low, sick, lonely. That in the midst of that, in the midst of that context, he saw what? He saw Yahweh, high and exalted. High and exalted. That's the reality. No matter who we see, what we experience, there's somebody higher up there. A transcendental purity. High and exalted. He was there. That's Yahweh. By the way, we, we, um, we don't know how the word... Um, how it is translated um, Yahweh. We just have the consonant. Nobody knows how the word is uh, pronounced. Some people call it Jehovah. Um, people like myself, I call it Yahweh. But we don't really know. But he had this overwhelming experience. Again, of transcendental purity. Of this transcendent God. Of this God that is above. Vis-a-vis -vis who? Uzziah. Who was sick. And dying. Isolated. He saw him. There. I've said. The theme of my message is what? Is the messenger. The, 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 the minister. And his calling. Now. So he says. He saw him there. High and exalted. Seated on a throne. And the train of his robe. Filled the temple. So obviously. Isaiah was in the temple. And he saw the Yahweh there. Feel there in the entire temple. And above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two they covered their faces. And with two they covered their feet. And with two they were flying and they were calling to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of glory. Those were the angelic beings who had a direct encounter. With the almighty God, with Yahweh. And they were singing and saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Now, some people have said that this, this means trinity. But in the Hebrew language, it means plurality of majesty. That God was completely holy. Was completely pure. And his purity was that, that transcends ordinary humanity. Ordinary mortality. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. That was Isaiah's experience. Remember in the context of a dying who? Uzziah. And he having this experience of God up there. I don't know how this one touches you. That that's where Isaiah was. Isaiah saw. Had a personal experience with God in the temple. And let's look at it. He experienced it very personally and deeply. God enabled him through a trance to experience the invisible with the visible eyes. Yahweh. It is God. And you know, if the angelic beings will be saying holy, holy, holy. What about you ordinary man? 
And it said that holiness fills the whole earth. And then it says that the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the treasures shook and the temple was filled with smoke. And he was touched with that. He saw that. He experienced it. And what will be his reaction? He said, woe to me, I cried, I am in the room, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And so being confronted with the presence of Yahweh, with God Almighty, the absolute purity of this transcendent God, he said, woe is me. I am, on, I am a nobody. I am nothing. Well, we are not told that Isaiah, when he experienced the, the glory of King Uzziah, that he had that experience, that he didn't compare that. But when he came to God, he cried out, he cried out, war to me. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. My lips, and even the people that I live with, they are unclean, and my eyes have seen the Lord, the, the Lord Almighty, because the Jews did not, it was not allowed that they should see God. Even Moses, when he cried, that he wanted to see, God said, only my back, only my presence, you are not allowed to see God. And he said, I've seen it. I'm dead. I'm finished. He was confronted with his own sinfulness. With his own inabilities. Whatever he thought that he was great at, he saw that he was a nobody. His sin. Let's step back again. Maybe make some application here. That you, as a minister of God, have you experienced this transcendental purity? And how did that affect you? Did you bring that, out, that sense of inadequacy? That sense of a nobody? Or you are filled with your goodness? With how great you are? With all your qualifications? Your intelligence and all of these things? As I said, woe is me. You know, when I look at my life and I compare myself with other people, I kind of feel good, right? I finished primary school in 1969 and some of my classmates and, and some of them have not done well. Many of them have died. And one day when I came back, I came back in, in uh, 93 from the U.S. And I came to my village here in Marakia. And I was driving back around 7.30. 7.30, I met one of my classmates. I think around quarter to eight. By quarter to eight. Quarter to eight. Quarter to eight. So, of course, uh, you, you know, as a classmate, I had to stop. I stopped. As a guy, one day I called him by his name and he said, Ah, Sam, can you? So he came. He said, Ah, Sam, can you? He said, Ah, Sam, can you? He said, I'm telling you. 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 He said, God. Haba, God. See the way I don't drink, I don't chase. You know, I, at least I don't smell as that man. Am I not better than Tango? Though? I'm not like this man. That's how I felt. I did not drink. I don't smoke. I don't chase. So obviously, I was not, I've never tasted Burkutu in my life. And to see this classmate of mine that we grew up together, went to school together, I say, How about I'm better? The same time, I, the person who recommended me to Bible college, I will not say his name. One time I was in Joss near Gadabiu and uh, I saw him and the one who recommended me, oh, I saw him, I stopped. I said, Sanusa, I greeted him. He saw me, he said, ah, Sam Kene. And then he came to greet me again around nine o'clock. He was dead wrong. He was dead wrong. And at that point he had four wives. Hi, Jamaa. He had four wives. Again, I look at him. I say, Kai, go thank God that, uh, you know, I'm a pastor. You know, I'm doing well. But honestly, apart from my classmate that I saw, I thought that I was better than, 
and my, the one that recommended me to my Bible college was backsliding and all of this, I thought that I was better. But when I saw God, 